have. And now, my dears, you have had so many treats this night, have you not? Aye! Aye. Well, now it is time for a trick. Oh. Indeed. And to do so, I now present unto you Mars Mandrake! <laughs> Mandrake, magical genius. I have suffered long and hard for my magic, and now it's your turn. I would like to share with you today a tale of courtly romance gone awry, as is so often the case. And I will do this with just a few simple playing cards. So without further ado. <clears throat> I shall tell you this, uh, this story using cards, verse, and wit, composed by myself, and that is no jest. This story you will find, if you heed every word, a drama of sorts, both queer and absurd. The first two of these three were a husband and wife, a king and a queen for most of their life. Now he called her Edith, and she called him John. Aye, she was the queen whom he doted upon. The king, he could smile, but the queen, she could not. For twas child that they wanted, but could not be got. For the king was quite virile and potent, well made. Not so for the queen, observe. She is spayed. <laughs> <laughs> the king yearned a son for to carry his name, and soon it was Edith he started to blame. The fighting and yelling, she could take it no more. She called John a cur, and his mistress lay his trumpet. <laughs> for she knew about Kate, a saucy young lass, with the face of a queen and a firm shapely nose. <laughs> he lusted for Kate, yet still loved his queen. So they became a threesome, with the king in between. <laughs> king John's fancy as they came to be known, but a king with two queens doth bring shame to the throne. Tis true, lust and greed do not mix well with fate, for soon it was Eden who lusted for Kate. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> the two queens in love soon sent John away. But he quickly returned. He wanted to play. Again, they rebuffed him, sent him outside the walls. And should he return, they cut off his bald head. <laughs> but he was persistent. He wanted to play. He returned once again while Kate was away. A fight did occur. Edith yelled, screamed, and hissed. As did the king, for he was truly upset. <laughs> Anon Kate returned, much to Edith's delight. Not so for the king, he was nowhere in sight. We be left with two queens, both happy and gay. Not so for the king, for he not had his way. Now what is the moral, the lesson we learn of king and two queens in the tables they turn? King John did learn it, and now I tell it to you. You can't have your Kate and Edith too. <laughs> I, I, I took a, a poll earlier today, oh. and I'd like to share the results with everyone here, if that's all right with you. Oh, but of course, my oh, dear. Just, oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Lords and ladies, you've seen many wonderful things here upon a finale over the season. You've seen wonderful musical acts and variety acts of all kinds, but there are a number of things you haven't seen. And now I present to you, from the home office in Mount Hope, England, the top ten things you did not see in finale this season. Woo! Woo! Number 10, Sir Lionel DePuce's step dance extravaganza. <laughs> Number 9, Walter Raleigh jumping a shark. <laughs> Number 8, Angry Peasant Rake Fight. Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> Number 7, The Wet Cod Piece Contest. <laughs> Six, the number six thing you did not see in finale this season, a sober Jack Avery. <laughs> number five, political round table with Gob the Leper. Oh, that sounds interesting. Okay. <laughs> number four, a fantastic 
fantastic juggling stunt that worked on the first try. Story time with Sir Potty Mouth. Oh, that's... <laughs> Number two, a handsome magician. What the? <laughs> and the number one thing that you did not see in finale this year, a performance of Rattlin' Bog as it should be sung, as an opera. <laughs> <laughs>